Hello, you're watching the Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major stories from across the world. Let's take a look at the headlines. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha resigns. New Zealand health workers begin protest. People across the world mark the defeat of the Nazis in World War II. And study chronicles alarming decline in bird population. In our first story from Sri Lanka, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha resigned on Monday, that's May 9th. This follows weeks of mass protests. Earlier in the day, supporters of the Prime Minister and his brother Gotabaya Rajapaksha, who is also the President, had attacked anti-government protesters. This pro-government mob had torn down tents erected by the protesters and beat them, leading to dozens of injuries. The violence took place despite police presence and the police were reportedly unable to control the mob. The resignation of Rajapaksha comes as massive protests have been taking place across the country due to the declining economic situation. The crisis has led to a huge decline in the popularities of the Rajapakshas as well, who had won massively in elections held in 2019 and 2020. On Sunday, in fact, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha was booed by protesters while visiting the Buddhist temple in Anuradhapura. The economic crisis has led to a dire shortage of essentials such as food and fuel, with ordinary Sri Lankans facing power cuts and even shortage of medicines. The government has failed to find a response to the crisis and has approached the IMF for funds. It is expected that the IMF package itself will come with stringent rules on spending, which might even intensify the crisis faced by the people. The government has imposed an emergency twice since April. Last week, two no-confidence motions were filed in Parliament against the government. Moving on to our next story, over 10,000 allied health workers across New Zealand have embarked on industrial action. Organised by the Public Service Association or the PSA, the action which began on Monday, May 9th, comes after 18 months of negotiations between the unions and district health boards failed to yield any results. Workers have taken to a working to rule policy. This means that they will not perform any more than what is stipulated in their contract. The working to rule will be in place for two weeks along with other collective actions such as scheduled time offs and refusing overtime work. Workers have not publicly stated their demands with the union stating that it is confidential as negotiations are still ongoing. But the DHB's failure to address staffing shortages is prominently highlighted by the industrial action. Workers have often complained in the past of being overworked, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Health workers groups from over 70 different job profiles are part of the action, including mental health workers, anesthetic technicians, dentists, contact tracers, laboratory technicians and social workers. The PSA organized a vote for industrial action in February when workers by an overwhelming majority of over 90% across all DHBs came out in favour of a strike. The planned strike which was scheduled for March was scuttled by the Employment Court in a last-minute decision in favour of the DHPs, who argued that the stress it could place on the healthcare sector could be disastrous. We now move on to our third story which is about Victory Day, which marks the defeat of Nazism and Fascism across the world in World War II. People have been commemorating this occasion in many places, especially in Russia, at a time when tensions are high due to the war in Ukraine. The Soviet Union played a decisive role in the defeat of Nazi Germany in the Second World War, losing 13% of its population and being responsible for over 70% of German deaths in battle. However, the Berlin police made sure to ban Soviet flags and St. George's Cross medals during the commemorations in Germany on May 8. This was widely condemned by progressive sections. There has been a larger trend in Europe of equating Nazism with Communism, even as many governments have overtly and covertly supported neo-Nazi groups. Many of these neo-Nazi groups and right-wing groups seek to propagate a revisionist version of history, according to which the Soviet Red Army, which liberated large parts of Europe from the Nazis, is portrayed as an occupying force. Meanwhile, on May 7th, progressive sections in Croatia marked the liberation of Zagreb from the fascist forces. On May 8, 1945, partisan units crossed the river at the historic Freedom Bridge, finally ousting the Nazi-backed Ustasha regime responsible for over 30,000 deaths over the course of the four-year occupation. The commemoration was organised by the network of anti-fascist women, which for the past seven years has tried to rebuild remembrance of Zagreb's contribution to the resistance and defiance in the face of the Ustasha. Participants highlighted the fact that Nazism is not over and pledged to continue the struggle against such forces. And finally, there has been a staggering decline in the global bird population, concludes a study comprising scientists from multiple institutions. The concerning fact was published in the journal Annual Review of Environment and Resources on May 4th. The global decline of this avian population is attributable to factors related to human activities. Scientists say that climate change, loss of habitats and over-exploitation are the primary contributors. Moreover, authors caution that climate change can be identified as an emerging driver of the bird population's decline on a global scale. The study found that around 48% of existing bird species worldwide are declining in their population. However, the study estimates suggest that 39% of the species have a stable population, 6% of the birds are showing an increasing trend, 
while the status of 7% is unknown. The findings bolstered a previous finding of 2019, which estimated that nearly 3 billion birds across the US and Canada were lost in 50 years. The researchers have expressed hopes for avian conservation efforts. However, they emphasize the fact that transformative changes are needed. According to one of the researchers, the bird population depends strongly on habitats and there is an urgent need to stop the loss of habitats to protect biodiversity. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.